How y'all doing? Good. Hello. Good. Um, how are you? I know that. you. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, we love to hear it. No need to complain. Okay. You know. <laughs> You're right. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. We are super excited to have you here. So guys, for those who are tuned in with us, and those who are coming in, um, definitely welcome to another episode of Indie Talks, where we are sitting down with the most phenomenal independent artists and music professionals who are doing their thing, okay? Who are blazing this path in what we call the music industry. So first and foremost, I am your host, Aisha Lewis Redway, and of course, you know, my beautiful co-host. All right. Hey, listen, our special guest tonight, listen, you, singer, songwriter, I mean, business woman, like you're on top of your game, okay? <laughs> and I just want to say, so, first of all, I love the name. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling. I'm feeling How good. How you feeling? Oh, How you I, feeling? I appreciate you guys sharing your platform with me. Uh, it means a lot. Of course, of course. This this is what it is. Listen, not only women supporting other women, but we are true yeah. black women indeed in supporting independent artists, and that's what it is. We want to support your craft, and that's what it is. We know what it is to put all of your one hundred and ten percent effort into making your music and making your business work for you. Look, Trust me. Amen. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So we're going to jump right into this, guys. So listen, first of all, um, you came, first of all, your whole, your background is amazing because not only did you transition, you know, from being in Cali and then you transitioned to Texas, yes, you are a basketball player. So talk about, first of all, not only the transition in regards to careers to transition from a basketball player to into music, but also talk about leaving Cali, where there's like one of the one of the mecca of areas of music to go yes, to um, Yeah, I Dallas. was born um, in San Diego, California. Um, so I didn't really like get to experience the whole, uh, you know, growing up thing because like, you know, my parents were pastors and uh, about... So I was there till I was like okay. about 11 or 12. Okay. Um, and then that's when I left to uh, move to Arkansas. Um, so yeah, I didn't really get to just experience the whole Cali, Cali living besides just going to yeah. church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> so, and then talk about for you. So once you well, no, decided, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, there you go. go ahead. No, I don't. I was just trying to finish, piggyback like, off like, the. Like, Story. Question. Um, but I was gonna get into like you started off playing basketball and then you ended up transitioning into a modeling career. Yes, I did. Y'all did that homework, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, it. That's what I we do. We so we had an interview um where you <laughs> said you spoke with a, a Dallas DJ and it came up like it became a topic of conversation that you sing. How did that come up? Um so I actually, at the time, I was working at Walmart, and, um, like, I was still trying to figure out. That's really why I had moved to Dallas, because I was going to play on a semi-pro team. Okay. And so, uh, with me moving to Texas, uh, I had a coach. You know, we were just trying to figure out um, the, the ins and the outs of what I was going to do. And it ended, up, it ended up not working out, because for some reason, the semi-pro league that I was going to play with wanted some money. You know, and I'm like, you know, so I was... Right, and I was like, like, I ain't never heard of that. Like, <laughs> you paying you? Nah, like, no, we, we was paying them. <laughs> yeah, so I, oh, I was no. just like, okay, well, maybe this basketball thing is just not for me no more. And yeah. I had been playing basketball since I was five years old, so like that was a big transition for me because that's my first love, yeah. you know. Wow. And wow. so, um, right when I met the DJ in Walmart or a producer. In Walmart, um, he asked me because at the time I was rocking this natural afro, and uh, people kept telling me they don't really see that, you know, just a woman always, you know, fully being natural. Um, and so they were like, "Do you model?" Um, and I was like, "Yeah, you know." Um, but I, like I said, I was still like going back and forth on what I wanted to really do. 
Um, but then when I tapped into really the modeling scene for Texas, uh, I really started meeting a lot of people. Met the DJ who introduced me to some people out of Houston. They asked me, do I sing? I'm like, uh-uh, I want to hoop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, which I, I've always sung because that was, you know, church and my parents being pastors, choirs and, and all that. But I didn't see myself being in an entertainment scene and as an artist. I didn't see that. Okay. So speaking of talking about your parents who, yes. you know, you said yes. they both are pastors, correct? both our pastors and being able to transition into the music. How did that take? Because, you know, we hear a lot of stories from, you know, the children, you know, the, the, the children that come from pastors and things of that nature and transitioning. Now, we hear some good, we hear some bad. But talk about your experience to be able to have family or parents that understand um, your transition. I think even for them, because, um, you know, I ain't, I, you know, they say it all the time, PKs, are, we hard-headed. <laughs> You know, you know, we, we get the dibbling, dabbling and stuff that we ain't got no business doing, just trying to figure out and balance life, you know, uh, without the pressure of mm -hmm. being a pastor's kid, you know, because that's pressure, you know, and you want to, you're living up to, to these expectations on top of trying to be who you are, you know, and um, it wasn't until like I was really like 25, 26 um, when my parents kind of like really start coming around and just saying, you know, we're we going to support you 100%. We ain't worried about them folk. <laughs> you know, and to like hear them say that it did, it, it lifted a lot of, you know, off my shoulder, the weight. And um, to have my parents behind me 100% means the world. How come you like never like seen yourself as like an artist, like before you got into music? Like, even though you knew you could sing? Because because, um, like, I like I think it was just because I just didn't see it. Like, <laughs> you know, that was something I just kept to myself, like me singing in the shower. I really wanted to, like, model um, mm. until I, like, understood the modeling aspect as far as, like, walking the runway or because I didn't even want to walk the runway. I really just wanted to, like, do things for, like, Nike and, you know, stuff like that since I played ball. Um but like when I made the transition and especially like my first year in the music, like I learned a lot, you know, as far as the business part. And I'm just like, I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, I, w I wasn't ready not mm -hmm. understanding the business part. And it's like, you know, we all say 90%, you know, business, 10% talent. Um, and the things that I went through my first year uh, with the music was just like, okay, I need to go back to the drawing board. Is this really what I want to do? Um, until I went through a, uh, a depressed stage um, in my life. And then I came back to the music. And then when I started really building my confidence, you know, um, I said, okay, music is what I want to do. You know, being able to be that inspiration for other people, not only through sports, but just to come from really nothing and then turn something into something, you know, and it's it's it's, it's been great. So talk about, um, you know, the tragedy that allowed you to become a triumph, um, you know, losing your brother and being able to focus and redirect and, and rising into uh, uh, and losing growing into my music. My brother was uh, real tough. Um, I lost him my senior year of high school, going into my senior year. And even like through that transition, we had went through like, like back to back deaths before my brother, mm. and um, but when that hit, mm. um, it was just like now, like what for me to be my in my senior year of high school, I'm trying to even figure out if I'm even going to college because I didn't have a, you know a basketball scholarship at the time. Uh, like just going through that, like life was like beat me up. I felt like, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, God, what is you mm. trying to tell me? You know, or what mm. what is it that you want mm -hmm. me to do? Um, because if you know, a lot of times we're not careful. We do, we do blame God for for things. You know what I'm saying? Not understanding the reason, but um, now I understand. Uh, and it was just you know for me to continue and live up to His name and continue the legacy. You know. Okay. Yes, and definitely. now with your transition into music and how disciplined you were with basketball. Um, 
like talk about like how that goes hand in hand like being very disciplined with music and basketball it were it, it it's most definitely hand in hand it is i'm glad i went to college i'm glad i played ball um because i have you know the passion and i just want to you know of working hard mm -hmm. you know for everything that i want it's nothing handed to me because even when i was playing basketball you had to have some some type of discipline which was waking up five o'clock in the morning if you didn't wake up at five o'clock in the morning for training you know it's just the same thing for, for singing you know if you don't go train if you don't go in the studio if you don't do the the little things that count as being an artist mm -hmm. you're not gonna make it yeah <laughs> gotta get, gotta get, gotta get the <laughs> vocal warm-ups and <laughs> yeah. gotta uh, be in there with the tea Days a week, would you say like you train yourself musically? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in the studio every day. Okay. Um, and me and my producer, um, we just, it's almost like a, a who, who would we say? Like a Brad and a JD. Like it's, it's that type of, we just, we just click, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And our chemistry is just crazy. Mm -hmm. And like, we pretty much started together. So um, for me starting like 2017, 2018 till now, vocally, I'm, I didn't came a long ways. So, you know, just continuously working on your craft and just being consistent. Okay. Now, you talked about, you know, how it just seemed like life was just, was just hitting you. And then on top of that, you know, kind of started off rough with the music, you know, trying to figure things out. What was the most scariest part about really starting the your musical journey? The scariest part was um, pretty much people trying to get me to be somebody that I'm not. <laughs> um, What's that? And, and, and when I say that, it's because, of course, sex sales. We all know that, you know. And, um, you know, with me <laughs> hooping, I'm a tomboy, you know, at heart. And I'm not with the Rockin' Hills and, and showing, you know, my... my gotcha. I mean... I, but I mean, yeah, you but can, that you mean, can, you can, uh, I'm not finna be on stage like that. <laughs> that's that's gotcha. too much walking, you know? <laughs> and going back and forth. Like, I'm just, I'm just honest and real, you know? And this whole trying to put this Love beside it. Of, of something that I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, this is what you get yeah. in it, on okay. and off the internet, you know. <laughs> DJ Momo four twenty wants to know who's hot sauce. That's my DJ, y'all. What's up, DJ Momo? <laughs> uh, he we had did the uh, <laughs> we had did the fleet conference. What up, DJ? Um, we did the fleet conference <laughs> last year, and we did the uh, basketball game. And I turned up a little bit, you know. I had to show a little skills, and then they ended up giving me the name Hot Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. you have All a right. you have a um a tournament a charity event coming I out. I do. Okay. I do. But. Um, so that is actually in the love and memories of my brother, um, because he was fifteen. So mm -hmm. I'm also doing a back to school uh drive mm -hmm. for the kids. Oh, we love that. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, so I'm in we in the process right now. Me and DJ Momo, we just getting everything. Our little our ducks in a row, all the information. But yes, in the loving memories of my brother, uh, because basketball is my heart, I really just want to give back to the community. Uh, you can't really go wrong with mm -hmm. sports and, and and singing and music. Everything just go hand in hand to bring people together. With, without people knowing that's what that does. <laughs> so this will be my first annual mm -hmm. celebrity basketball game. Um, and yeah, um, more to come. Okay. So. All right, we're gonna get to the music real soon. I guess I, got, I definitely have to ask you because you know, last year you was able to do a concert and perform with oh, RB yeah. sensation Jacquees. <laughs> and I, I kind of want you to talk about those memorable moments like that in just regards to you know, what was it like to really to be have that stage and be able to bring your personality and be able to mesh with another RB sensation as well. Um, and, and oh, really these are the moments that you dream of, you know, that you watch on TV, that uh, everybody wants to have that experience of, you know, and it's it's a beautiful thing to watch my journey from where I started to now I'm, I'm on the stage or I'm hitting the stages with, with people that 
I love to hear, you know. Um, and it's it's truly a blessing mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you know, once you work so hard and then now you see that the work is paying off to where you're you're standing alongside of the greats, you know, who, who paved the way for you as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, it's, it's dope. And I appreciate all the opportunities that that I've been blessed with. How that how, how did that set up go for like you to? Uh, shout out to uh, Alexandria. Um, she's actually an actor or actress out of Dallas, Texas. She actually plugged me in um, with with a guy who uh, also plugged. He knew somebody that knew somebody. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, it's always always do it's always the connect. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I know I wanted to talk about balance because not only do you, you know, as, as a performer, as a singer, you know, a songwriter, you know, um, you own your own label and publishing. I want you to kind of dig into that balance and that thought process in regards to knowing, you know, your creative levels and what you want to put out, how you want to control what okay, you so first, do. I'm just gonna say, you know, you can't do nothing without a team. Um, and, you know, this has been built over the years of going on 11 years, J Humble Entertainment. Um, and it's crazy that you just said it because my manager was just like, okay, so who we, who we signing first? <laughs> and I'm just like, well, can we like get to where we trying to go first before we, <laughs> you know, I, Cause it's a lot already on my plate as just being an artist on top of handling, mm -hmm. you know, my business. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, you know, I be trying to find a balance, you know, and I don't want to lead nobody the wrong way. But, um, some, you know, sometimes it, it has its moments because, um, not not everybody is as professional, you know, as mm -hmm. you want them to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. That um, that part. <laughs> but I've learned a lot in this entertainment, especially like just keeping a level head to where and understanding that everybody is not like you and everybody's not going to respond like you. So then I won't get in my feelings. <laughs> you know, and I've right. just, um, and then, you know, what's for me is for me. So I, I really just try to just, I've learned how to just keep everything business with, with people because a lot of times, we tend, especially with us having good hearts, we tend to always want to bring people up with mm -hmm. us, you know, and bring them along with us, but not everybody is ready for that. You know, so I'm learning. I'm still learning. Learn you. <laughs> you're learning and you're preaching. That's a that you preaching. You, I was going to say, you preaching, because I was like, I need to hear yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> is there, like, now that, that you learn. have like, your own entertainment, well, that you have your own entertainment company, is there anything that you wish you knew back then that you know now that you would have changed as an artist? Um, or anything that you would have just, like, you know, done differently? I think uh, one thing I would, I'm not going to say everything because it, it didn't really made me who Jay Humble is. So one thing is really just like not being so quick to invest because a person say that they can put you in position. Mm. <laughs> I like I've um I've done that a good couple of times and then the last time I really bumped my head, <laughs> you know. Um cuz I you know I've worked with a, a, a quite a few people within the industry and you know the internet is really could be deceitful to to a lot of things. You can't believe everything you see on the internet, you know. Just just because somebody been in the in the game for twenty years don't mean they can help you, <laughs> you know. So I've I've learned to really do my research and don't really jump the gun and be so excited because you feel like somebody's gonna take your career to the next level. Mm -hmm. Oh man, listen, it's 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 some 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 uh some people out here. That say a lot of things, trust me. But um, I'm glad that you're able to this, and this is why it's important because I'm glad you're able to take those. Um, because some some people we have I've heard stories where people, you know, have been um taken advantage of, and you know, yeah. and, and it makes them want to give up. You know, it makes them want to stop. But hearing your hey, testimony, I'm gonna say testimony. You know, 
and be able to see that you're able to, you know, take those lessons, learn from them and turn it into the point where like, you know what? All right. I went through it. All right. I'm gonna keep going. And it just get me. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna Absolutely. just get better for the next time. So, I mean, definitely kudos to you. Definitely keep doing what you Thank do because you. you have some amazing music. Now we um, get into it. Now, speaking of music. Come on, let's tap in. We got the music. <laughs> okay, so of course you <laughs> so of course you had an array of singles uh, where you also have your EP that you dropped in 2020. Um, but of course you have your most recent, of course, Stop Playing. And I, I want to talk about this music. I want to talk about your thug pride. I want to talk about this this hand, this 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 penmanship that we got going on. And as well, your video treatments, because you, I love the yeah. styling, the, the hair, everything is just, yes, is man. from head to toe. You gotta do it right if you're gonna do it. <laughs> everything is professional, very, like, it's high quality. Y'all waiting on me? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, where are we starting? At? Okay, tell me again. So, like, Let's talk about the the single um you did with stop playing okay. let's because this is your most recent release uh talk about you really kind of get into because you i mean you really pour like a r b has a real pure r b sound you know and i, I don't want to hear nobody else talk no. about some r b is there one got no r b singers out here you're, you're purely at heart um when it comes to this r b and also I've, I've, I've listened to other singles that you have you got a little afro b sound going on things of that nature stop but talk about your most playing. recent release stop playing. Stop um, playing. shout out to uh mav rock and louis g and cliff um those were the producers and writer um on it as long as long as with me and stop playing was personal it was a personal record um just dealing with uh mm -hmm. real life situations in my life you know and i had got to a point to where i you know i said man i'm tired of people playing with me <laughs> you know and it's like you can you can pour so much into people and it's not even like the fact that mm -hmm. they even want, they want you to pour it to them <laughs> they not even you know? and that and that's something i'm learning because i'm like you know why people say they want to be loved you love them and then they show you something totally different you know and yeah stop playing was just one of those records i just needed to release you know which is going to be a part of my album which is called trigger so um yeah i what? so it was a whole lot of triggering mo moments in my life with with 2022 <laughs> and then finding finding that balance and understanding to put myself first yes. no. and I, listen I love these whole lot of life. I love it. I like that. That's it. Always. Now, being that you just spoke about your sophomore album that you're about to release, that you're in the process of releasing, do we have a date? No. Nope. <laughs> it, it was supposed to be. <laughs> shout out to my man from London. Uh, it was supposed to be. My my way was supposed to be April. Okay. But it's not looking like that. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's fine. Uh -oh. I think everything happens for a reason. Um, but uh, we do have visuals for Stop Playing. Okay. Um, don't know the date for that mm -hmm. either, y'all. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But it's coming. <laughs> why, uh, why Triggered? Yeah, why the title? I chose Triggered uh, as a title because I feel like those are topics that people don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. As As us mm. as a black community and understand there's nothing wrong with uh going to therapy because i went uh, there's nothing wrong with getting help you know or because every day we're learning something new about ourselves every day we're learning something about life people you know um and it's like we be so stuck within ourselves I, I, and i mean we could say we hard-headed or what or our pride always gets in the in the way because we don't want the next man to see us be vulnerable. Yeah. So, so this album is me just being vulnerable mm. all the way. Mm. Black people, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay. It really is. And, and, I, and I feel like the internet plays a part in it as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. It does. It really does. I think I was, I was literally having a conversation with someone the other day when we were just talking about, like, you know, mental health, social media 
and all the things that that's presented. And I think that sometimes it's okay to take a break. Like, you know, even for Diana, like, like as much as this is our business and what we do, like, we gotta take a break. Like, we need a moment. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay because it's just like, sometimes it's just like, and even like when I have my mentees work for us and they're on them, I'm like, hey, listen, if you feel like you need a day, because nobody wants to be burnt day. out, you know. It's okay. Yeah, because it's like, hey, um, and I, I thank God for my mom. She's a praying woman. Um, and, you know, mm. at, at one point in time, I think sometimes it creeps up still, like my depression sometimes, you know. And it's like, you know, when I went through this this uh, album and I'm still going through it, like, I'm still having moments, <laughs> you know. But it's a good thing because I'm just like, okay, like, I can show that and, and people going to be able to relate. To, to some real stuff, you know? Um, and it's just like, right. I'm I'm blessed to even be in this position. It is a blessing because I'm showing other people like it's okay. Yeah. Mm. Do you ever feel, sorry, sorry, Asia. Do you ever feel like maybe no, there's some things that you don't want to get too personal with to put in music? Or you just feel like, you know, I'm going to just put it out. Um, no. No. Uh, because that was something I was fighting previously. Like when I dropped my first album, I was just like, now, now that I'm with this album, like it's taking me to a place that you know I ain't been wanting to go because I'm just like I keep you know it, you know at times we tend to bottle everything within you know, and that's why I'm mm -hmm. like you know music for me is is therapy. Like it starts with me and then being able to release it. It's it's not I mean it's for the people, but it's 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 really for me, you know. And um, now, nah, I mean, I'm just learning within myself, too, just the walking confidence, walking how you feel. There's nothing wrong with if you need to cry, cry it out and bounce back. <laughs> it's okay to cry. Yeah. That part. <laughs> and as a woman in the industry, um, or definitely who's, you know, came in, learned, went through some hard lessons and you know you're overcoming and you're still walking through it talk about you know how important it is for you as a woman that's in this industry uh, having a voice you know the women and we we it you know you, you the world do not go around without no woman <laughs> you know and it's like it's, it's just something about a woman's touch and you know we 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 make it happen yes. you know we do and mm. people don't even know that you're going through something right now as we speak right now because we that strong, you know? Mm -hmm. So shout out to the black women. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. like we always have to be that strong person. Like, we can never just be, you know? Well, I, I, I mean, I know y'all interviewing me, but I, I be wondering, like, why, though? Like, why is that? You know what? It's crazy. It can be new to me, in my opinion. I feel like it can be numerous answers, right? Because you got to think about the generation in which, you know, who we are as millennials and who we came from. You know, we, it depends. You know, I have a Southern Roots family where they're, you know, you know, take it. This first thing about it is take it to God. You know, you got to pray about it. You know, leave it there. Yeah. You know, oh, you got to be strong. Don't let them see you weak. You know, from that type of style, and I think everybody can either relate or have some type of, you know, different background in which they're raised and how they're taught. And I think that's that sometimes because we yeah. think about where we came from, it's scary for us to release that. And even for me, like I have a son and I talk to him every day. I talk to him every day and talk to him like, you know, how you feeling? Are you good? What's your emotions? What you feeling like today? Are you sad, upset, angry? You know, are you just happy? You know, you, what is it? So that because for him growing up a black young boy into a black man, you know, we, we see it. You know, we see where we have friends that's in relationships and men are not communicating. We see what it is, you know, different things. So I'm trying to yeah. teach him that it's okay. Talk about it. Say this as your, you know, I don't want you to feel like you're a softy or anything like that, but it's okay to talk about it. Just communicate. And I think for us, I think it's just one of those things where a lot of people, depending on how they were raised or what their background is, it's just 
we fight because we're told to be strong like we have to stand firm and then of course as the natural side of women is we always have to just have the solution now, we always if, have to be the problem yeah, like one thing we'll do is we'll, we'll get it done like big right. we will get it done mm -hmm. and i think also it's like like what aisha was saying it's a generational thing like you witness all right your mom is a strong black woman okay your, your mom witnessed her mom your grandmother a strong black woman grandmother witnessed her mom like mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a, a ripple effect and it's like it keeps going down and down and down and down until it's like when do we stop like when do we know like it's okay to not be okay sometimes yeah i preach now <laughs> i love, yeah, I just, I love you. <laughs> That's some real stuff, and that's why it's, it's it's so important. Some some things to go back to uh, learn and unlearn mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned that in therapy, you know. And it's 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 a lot of stuff that's deep rooted, you know what I'm saying? And we got to heal, got to yeah. heal from it. Yes, right. So true. I I love that. I love this. I love that section. I love that. <laughs> All right, so first of all, we, I just want to say thank you so much for just, you know, being on the show with us, having a real conversation, opening it up, you know, really? we chatting it up. All we really? need is some wine or something, like, just to really just say this. <laughs> um, this was a, just amazing. So, of course, you know, wrapping up, um, you know, a lot of, we, like I said, our whole purpose of our platform is supporting independent artists like yourself and, you know, other artists. What encouragement can you provide to other young artists that, is that you know who maybe be struggling it with transition and you know say it because like you said in the beginning you know you really wanted to focus on basketball it wasn't about the music at first uh, even though you had the talent talk about those and, and what encouragement you be able to provide to these individuals who are in different segments oh, of so their journey don't let society make you feel like you're in a rush uh, really figure out who you are what you want to do um, and it's okay to just focus on one thing. And when you focus on that one thing, everything else will align itself. Um, you know, it's, it's easier than said about, you know, just giving up, but don't give up. Count on yourself, bet on yourself and, you know, keep God first. Mm -hmm. And what, what, mm -hmm. sorry, what, um, what upcoming things do you have as far as like, are you doing a tour? Like we, we spoke about your sophomore album and you have your basketball charity event. What other things like if you want to plug it in real quick? Okay. I know we're going to uh, Austin for South by Southwest, uh, oh. March the 18th. I know we got an event yes. here um, with the Vert Vertical DJs. That's on March the 20th. Um, shout out to the, my DJ. Uh, we got a halftime football show for the Women's Football League. Right. That's uh that's coming up soon. Um uh, and I'm and it's a lot of other stuff. That's just the stuff I can like think of right now. Um you know, I got interviews coming up. Uh yeah, we really finna be moving mm -hmm. around, touring. Uh we're looking to do that for the summertime. Um uh, let's, let's, let's talk. Cause Anytime actually we've been saying we wanna come up that way. So you know, let's you, talk. Okay. Listen, hit us up. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Definitely. All right. So, first of all, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I mean, Jay Humble, thank you just for the story, the inspiration, just hearing it from you, just, you know, the, from the source. I love it. I, it was just amazing. It's touching. I want to say, I just want to encourage you because I know sometimes, you know, as, as creatives, you know, we work so hard. We 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 dig in and, and criticize ourselves, and we, you know, and and yeah. we're our own worst critics. So, I want to encourage you just to keep going. You definitely have something. Um, you know, and and, and they all know I'm not a person to say that because obviously my background comes from working in the music industry, and always my my ordeal is always to be upfront and honest and tell you like you definitely have something. You definitely have. Um, a music that is befitting to our time so i want you to definitely keep going i mean from everything keep you know thank thank god for your team who's there who's supporting you um and who's helping you be able to do this walk you, I really so definitely that. keep going 
All right. So, guys, if you have not checked out Tumble's music, you better do it, okay? We over here truly support our independent artists, so please just don't push the button to stream. Please literally go download, purchase. It takes a lot to be an indie artist, trust me. So please, let's make sure that we are truly supporting each and every one of our independent artists, all right? So first of all, we want to thank you again for being on the platform. Yes, ma'am. And Love y'all, until man. next time, Absolutely. we're definitely going to stay blessing. connected. You too. All right. Same to you. Let's do Zoom then. I don't know. Zoom. But um, this was, I love this. This was amazing. Yes. I'm, it's just, I love the importance Everyone's of story. hearing not, not, on the, not just everyone's story, but for her specifically is just talking about mental health and really going it because when you're working in this industry it can take a lot out of you especially when you have been through many losses whether you know personally or creatively and to be able to say you know what yes like i said before just take it I'm like all right it hit me it thought it was gonna get me you know down or whatever the deal is but to really get back up so i i just love that it's so encouraging it's it's good to hear because obviously when you what you see is a product of someone's you know just growing growth so amazing so guys thank you so much for tuning in with us we love it we want you to come back here every single thursday um, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We definitely, um, you know, we are bringing, we got a, a, a roster of amazing people that we're going to be bringing on, okay? We got a couple surprises for you coming up, okay? Definitely stay tuned in with us. Also, check out our newest podcast episode of Let's Run That Back. Okay, we got episode two up. Listen, we talked about our trips to LA, covering Grammys weekend. We talked about the Rihanna had a uh, halftime show, which was her concert. Just haven't had a football game. Uh, we talked about all of the new music. We are, we talk, we actually, we have our thoughts on a lot of new music, independent artists, um, everything that dropped. So definitely check it out. We are on Spotify podcast as well. And go check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Hey. Please, please, comment. please subscribe Positive. and like, repost, yes. comment, show some love. Just show some love. So, guys, thank you once and once again. Oh, is there a day? Is there anything you want to plug in? Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, guys, you already know what it is, okay? Real music, real style, and real people. I'm your host, Asia Lewis Redway, and of course, my beautiful co host, they are me. So, guys, like I said, it's always real over here, and it don't get no realer than this. All right, oh, so guys, until the next time, peace. <laughs> no, guys, no comments, no interviews. All right, <laughs> yes.